Beckham. It's instead of being Emily in Paris, could I be dainty in Marseille? It doesn't have the same ring, does it? <laughs> so if you saw last week's video, you'll know that uh, I kind of got, would we say stranded by Ryanair? That sounds a bit extreme. Basically, they needed people to get off a flight because of an issue with the crew member. I volunteered, so did Karen, so did Vivian. They got weird connecting flights back to London. No, Dublin, through London. They are now in Dublin, all is well. I am in Marseille because I decided to take the direct flight home on the Sunday. Therefore, I'd get Friday, Saturday and Sunday morning in Marseille. I thought, oh, that'd be cool. I volunteered to get off the flight because I can work remotely. There was people with kids. She was like, oh, if nobody volunteers, we'll start picking people. I said, there's gonna be carnage. Anyway, uh, long story short, I kind of got stranded because they promised me a hotel and then they were like, book your own hotel. And then I was like, okay, there was no hotels. <laughs> Thankfully, the lovely lady in the Ibis at the hotel rang uh, one of the ones in the city and then I couldn't get a taxi to the hotel. Finally got one, arrived at half five, six, after getting two or three hours sleep. It's sunny, so I can't sleep when it's sunny. Um, so I'm gonna go get coffee. We are gonna explore Marseille together. I am now solo. I had so much fun with the girls last week in a group. So the way I see this is, silver linings. We are now on a solo adventure in Marseille. Although I'm currently really, really tired. Once I, yeah, once I rest later, <laughs> it'll all be fine. Um, I'm right next to the train station as well. And someone said there's somewhere really pre pretty to visit on the train that's an hour away and I can't remember the name. But anyway, um, let's have our, let's have an impromptu Marseille adventure. Just outside of my hotel and down the steps, I found this little bistro cafe on the corner where I got myself a delicious breakfast, which was what I needed. A good old omelette, some French bread, coffee and orange juice. I then just took out Google Maps on my phone and I knew that there was a port and an old town in Marseille. So I popped on my runners and I headed down that direction. It was about a 15 minute walk and I went to the old town and to be honest I just started you know walking around Marseille is absolutely huge it's um I think Paris is bigger but I think am I right in saying that Marseille is the second biggest city in France so there's absolutely loads to do but I was conscious that oh do you know what I was kind of feeling a bit jet laggy and hungover because I had only gotten about three hours sleep so I didn't want to go too far from my hotel especially being in like an unfamiliar area so I just went and explored down by the boats there was a museum there was a big cathedral that reminded me of the one that um, in Santiago when I was on Camino. So I kind of just had a stroll, then I had some lunch and I headed back to my hotel. I did some work on the laptop and then I had an early night because it was needed. I just want to point out as well, there is something on the bottom corner of the screen. There is nothing wrong with your screen at home if you're watching this. There was something on the lens of my camera, but it is only for this section of the video. I checked the footage and when I go to Avignon, the camera lens is nice and clean. Sometimes on a sunny day, it's very hard to see the screen on the back. So I only copped it when I was editing. It is really annoying because it's annoying to me as I'm watching this, but it is gone at the end of the video.
good wording. How do we feel about a little adventure, a little train adventure? I'm just waiting for my stomach to settle after breakfast. You know what happens when you drink coffee. Anyway, that's crude. Um, I want to, actually it was Brona from Magic Hill. Magic Hill were the company that I booked my trip for my Camino with. And Brona was like, oh, I'm only after being around that region that you've been in. And she says, highly suggest getting the train from Marseille to Avignon. So there's a local train, which is an hour and a half, or there's a fast TGV train, which is 30 minutes or 33 minutes. I've always wanted to get on the fast train. This fast train brings you all around like France. Like I could go up to... Uh, Monaco, or if I wanted to, we are not going to Monaco. We do not have the budget to go to Monaco. <laughs> so, um, Marseille, do you know what? Marseille is grand, but it's a big city for me. Like, it's a bit, just a city. Um, there's loads of things, like I could definitely spend like another day, but I just think, when am I gonna get the chance again to go to Avignon? So I think the train is on, I think the train is 30 quid, which we do that, sure look. Sure. Now, Ryanair won't cover the cost of me train adventures. <laughs> I could chance my arm. I said, well, I had to go to Avignon because I couldn't get a hotel. I know, you're getting into trouble then. But, um, yes, a day in Avignon. Avignon, I'm hoping I'm saying it right, is a medieval town. It is really pretty. Um, from reading guides just over breakfast on my phone, it was saying you definitely need more than a day in Avignon. But I think all I have is a day. Well, I, no, I do only have a day. I need to come back this evening because I fly home tomorrow on my the flight that they changed for me. So I fly home Sunday, one o'clock, and it's in the afternoon. So at least if they delay me and stuff, it's not going to be as bad as what it was like on Thursday because Thursday, it was a night, it was like... It was supposed to take off at half 11. Then it was delayed till half 12. And then there was all that carnage. Uh, sleep deprivation was, oh, I had a great sleep last night. Oh my God. I watched Gardener's World on my phone. And then it, it, we're an hour ahead in France. I watched um, Gardener's World and just, I was even dozing off watching it. <laughs> and then I was asleep and all 10 o'clock, slept like a brick. Anyway. I look at Joni, I just needed to catch up on the sleep I lost. Anyway, I'm sounding like a diva, catch up on my sleep. Um, let's go to Avignon. The train station is right beside the hotel. I feel like that's a sign. And yeah, let's see what we can find on our little adventure. Let's go on the fast train. So I just want to give you some tips on the TGV. If you do want to go to Avignon, there is a separate TGV train station at Avignon and you can also get a normal train, a local train. A local train is going to take an hour and a half and the TGV takes roughly, I think, 33 minutes. So it's much quicker. It also stops at Aix-en-Provence on the way. So if you don't want to go all the way to Avignon and you want to go to Axe which you can see in last week's video you can also go there Axe is really pretty and the TGV also goes all over uh, France I, th I think it goes to other places too you could go to Paris wherever you want to go one thing I noticed is try and book your train ticket early I wanted to go on I think it was like the 9 45 and there was only first class tickets left so I think I paid like an extra 20 quid so um just bear that in mind and try and book your tickets in advance I got a taxi it was roughly 13 euros to get from the TGV train station to the tourist office there I picked up a map and I headed to the Pope's Palace and I wandered around the kind of historical area and you'll also see that I got on the good old uh, tourist train. It's similar to the one that I got on in Axe. It was the same price. It was 10 euros for an hour. So if your legs are sore and it was a really, really hot day, it was, I think about 36 degrees. And um, there was like a heat warning. I'm not sure what that is in Celsius, but it was really hot. So I decided to get onto the tourist train and rest my feet and just go around on that to see the town. Mount Laurel high fives for miles in spring. Rainbow trout and hummingbird wings. Golden eyes. 
If you are into nature and walking, you can also go across the bridge to the other side and there was a shorter walk and then there was a longer 13 kilometer and there's like a little island I'm going to call it. It's supposed to be beautiful. If I had more time, I would definitely uh, walk around that. But I do think that either Avignon or Aix-en-Provence will be amazing bases. They're really nice French towns and I think if you want to go visit, maybe in Seoul or some of the lavender fields and places like that. I think these would be great places to have as your base. I know I let you down. I made the same mistake. I am the worrying kind, resting my life away. last week's video you'll notice I found I think it was a cat bookshop and a cat cafe I did go into the Irish bar for a pint of Guinness it was eight euro that is absolute theft <laughs> to pay eight euro and it wasn't even nice but anyway while I was there I googled oh I wonder do they have any cat cafes here and they did and it was only like a five minute walk it's really easy to find um i think there's only one of them in avignon if you pop it into google you'll find it i think this was one of my favorite cat cafes because they had a wall and it was full of pictures of all of the cats that had been adopted and a lot of the polaroids went back to like 2015 2016. this was probably one of the biggest um cat cafes in terms of the size but there was a lot of 
enough space for the cats. They had loads of toys and what I liked actually about all of the cat places that I went was they had like beams and walkways in the ceiling because obviously cats they like to be able to jump up high when they want to you know escape um, or retreat. And I have to say, there is something so pretty about the French cats. They seem to have the fluffy cats. I'm not sure if it's just in the area um, they're most common, but I was there was this little strawberry blonde guy. He was absolutely stunning. And I'm like, how are you a stray cat? Their stray cats are just really pretty. Um, so all of these cats are looking for homes. Um, so you can pop in, have a cup of tea. So if you are living in the south of France and you want a little cat to adopt, the staff were really, really friendly. I just had a coffee and an ice cream and I wish I could have spent more time here, but I needed to head back to the train station. Another tip that I just want to give is if you are looking to get a taxi, there is not a lot of taxis. I walked to the local train station and I had to like call a number to get a taxi and one of them pulled up and I actually shared the taxi with a lovely French couple because we were all going the same direction taxi. And um, so I got a taxi back to the TGV station um, to get the train back. But if you have any taxi apps, they didn't work for me in Avignon, but my taxi apps, I think it was free now that I used, they were when I was in Marseille but I did notice in France on my adventure and even in last week's video there's not as many taxis um, compared to home or compared to you know London or other big cities so please bear that in mind. Good morning yes I do have to check my camera it's on the right setting for the set I'm just packing up Today will be my second attempt to get back to Dublin via Ryanair. Um, <clears throat> I'm just packing. I don't have much time this morning because I'm going to have to leave for the airport in like an hour. So normally if I had more energy, I'd be like, yeah, I'll get up early and go somewhere before I have to fly home. But because I've already had a lot of adventure <laughs> this week, the fatigue is starting to hit. I'm so excited for my own bed. And um, <clears throat> so my neighbour, because obviously I extended my stay unplanned um, because of what happened with Ryanair. So my neighbour was amazing and has been checking my garden for me because uh, for people who watch my Sunday garden video, you'll know that my neighbours are really good. We swap plants. We are plant people. And I've said this before. I don't like asking no shade to my friends that are non-plant people, but plant people know how to water. I mean, we soak the roots, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so if I ask my non-plant friends, no no shade to my friends, they uh, they might not water them proper. However, Ireland has had loads of lovely cold rain. <laughs> so I was like, Grant. Uh, so I'm dying to get home to cut the grass. Uh, the grass hasn't been cut now in a whole week. So that's a whole week I'm gone out of Ireland now. Uh, I was only supposed to be gone for five days. So, I think I cut the grass last Friday week. So she'll be coming on 10 days needing a cut. So I'm dying to get home to cut the grass. That's the only thing I can think of. My friend Rachel was like, I'll say you're dying for your own bed. And I was like, I'm dying to cut me grass. <laughs> anyway, um, what was I going to say? Also, I just wanted to say everybody, aside from Ryanair, has been so, so lovely. And I don't speak French. I can say bonjour. I can say merci. <laughs> Uh, a few little words, but um, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? Parlez-vous anglais? So I've just been getting by with it and a smile. But everybody has been so lovely and um, patient with me, if that makes sense. Like, I have obviously travelled to many places where English isn't the native language. And um, there's a lot to be said for a Google Translate. But what I will say is... I feel like in Ireland, like if a French person came to Ireland, the Irish people wouldn't have a word of the French. But loads of people here had a good amount of English and even in like the countryside and stuff. And I think I'm just trying to say I appreciate that because I feel like we're not as accommodating at home. And um, don't get me wrong, Irish people, we are very friendly and we will try and help you. We'll even get the Google Translate out. But um, we we only speak the English, a bit of Irish, and yeah, 
obviously the people watching this in Ireland going, well, I can speak this, but fair play to you. But most of us, I think the majority can't. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is the French people have been really friendly, really helpful. Even little things like figuring out the train um, and where my seat was, I couldn't find the little things. Like people just being nice. Um, so yeah, my French adventure is coming to an end. Light a candle, there is no issues with Ryanair today. I've done a little Google check. It says my flight is on time. I no longer have any faith like, I did a claim last year for Ryanair because I was delayed in London for more than four hours. Grand, you get 250 quid, Sherlock. So I'm going to get me 250 and I'm going to invoice them as well for my hotel and my taxis. They said they'll only pay for a one night hotel, but I'm going to just submit the two nights and just see. But I am grateful Although it was scary in the beginning, I'm grateful that I got to spend the extra two days and do this little adventure because I would never have gotten to do this. And I'm in a really privileged position that I could turn around and say, oh, I'll stay because sure, I work for myself and I can move things around because the amount of people in the airport that were like, oh my God, I have a meeting tomorrow. I have to get in for work. I, I don't get paid, da, 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 da. Um, needed to get home to their family. All I was thinking about was uh, me plants and having enough knickers. So aren't I the lucky one to be carefree? Um, and can just go with the wind and be like, ah, oh, yeah, because I know one day I probably won't be able to do that. So while I am young, free, carefree and single, when I say carefree, there's a lot of anxiety, but carefree, responsibility free. Um, but no, I do have to get home now and do some work and catch up on the past two days. Anyway, I am absolutely waffling. There's four minutes of waffle for you. I'll put a little thing here to let you know if there was any hassle with Ryanair. <laughs> if all is well, I'll just put a lovely little B-roll of me in the sky saying I'm back in Ireland. If there's any more scandal with uh, Ryanair, I'm not even giving them any more airtime. I'm not. Anyway, sorry for this random vlog. This wasn't planned. Normal content will hopefully resume soon. We will be back in the garden. We'll be tidying up. All will be grand in the world. Cheeky thumbs up. And I'll see you very soon, hopefully, from my own house in Ireland. <laughs>